good to go. Okay. Um, welcome everyone to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of April 29th, 2024. My name is Erica Vikas, and as the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst's YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I will take roll call. When I call your name, let me know you're here. Um, Lindsay Starr. Here, that's one. <laughs> Karen Winter. Not here this evening. Uh, Pat Off. Present. Karen Blum. Present. And for the record, this is Karen's first Design Review Board meeting as a new member. We are glad that she's here. Oh, and here's Karen Winter. Um, so welcome, Karen Blum. We're glad to have you on the team and welcome Karen Winter. <laughs> I think that is her role and Eric Zikas. All right, board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I'll see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware the board will not respond to comments during general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, participant, uh, participation will be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. We'll start with general public comment period. And then we have two applications tonight, DRB FY 2024-18 in Paradise of India to replace existing awning. And number 19 from the town of Amherst to install new standalone accessible public restroom and Kendrick Park will then approve our meeting minutes and then head on to other business, um, which tonight will include uh, revisiting of the uh, discussion on design review board standards. So we can head into general public comment period if we have any guests who would like to share a thought. So I think the only two of uh, individuals and tenants are both our applicants. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, besides that, there's nobody else whose hands raised to speak tonight. Okay, thanks Rob. And let's keep our eye on the numbers if some folks pop in. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. So is there anybody here tonight from Paradise of India? There is, I believe, and Dorso is in attendance. And let me see if they will accept my panelist invitation. Oh, she's rejoining us now. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you, welcome, glad to see you. Um, nice to see you all. I, we, you submitted a couple of documents uh, for the DRB and I can screen share, or if you're comfortable doing that, you certainly can do that. What would um, you I can't, I'm on my phone, so what I have is on the computer. I do have okay. Paper copies. I'll screen share, and if you could walk us through your proposal, um, okay, and, and you can tell me when to move my cursor around and things like that. Okay, so um, what you look, so basically they have existing awnings which are in disrepair. 
So we're just looking to recover them with new fabric. But we would be changing the color to the colors that are noted. Um, probably a page or two down. It's a a green tweed and then a, a green stripe. So yeah. the front, yeah. So kind of as shown in the picture there. Um, and then they currently have lettering on the two ends of the large awning out front with just the name or mm -hmm. maybe just one end. And then, uh, so we're just going to replicate what's there. And then the other dome awning over the front entrance just says entrance. And then there's a small awning on the, another dome awning on the side. I think that's just a back or side entrance, maybe for deliveries or whatever. All right. So fair to sum up that the existing awnings are black. Yeah. With white lettering and the changes are to move to a forest green with white lettering. And then uh, with the exception with a forest green on the sides, you said in the valence and then the front, the, the main part of the will be this tweed yeah. stripe. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're using the existing structures, so nothing's changing. There. Yeah, and it's going to be a umbrella fabric awning, so no changes to the actual material type either. All right. Uh, DRB members, are there any uh, clarifying questions, concerns you'd like to raise? I think it looks pretty sharp. Yeah, I think it'll look nice. A little more color. Mm -hmm. And and can I just ask that the umbrellas will stay that same color? So there's there's some some continuity between the umbrellas and the awning as well. Oh yeah, and I'm not sure if the umbrellas are part of their location or um the neighbor. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. It may be the neighbor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the, the cafe next door, uh black sheep uses those for their business. I don't even know if, I think those umbrellas might be gone at this point. They might have put them away um, for the winter time. So yeah, I, yeah, I don't but, think I that, mean, that's if they for the do, business. Yeah, if they do use them, and that does coordinate. So it's kind of yeah, nice. It's a nice, yeah, it's a nice yeah. point. It's, it's a nice, you know, the to totality is a nice um, streetscape. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Agreed. All right, well, it sounds like there isn't uh much to be concerned about here. Could I uh, ask for a motion to approve as submitted? I make a motion to approve as submitted. Thanks, is there a second? I second. Thank you, Karen. All those in favor of approving Paradise of India's new awning proposal, please raise your hand. And we've lost Lindsay for a minute, I think. No, nope, I'm here. Oh, there she is. All right. Sorry. I have my a funny screen setting. That's unanimous. Thank you so much. Oh, great. And that was a quick one. We are at record time. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, do I still need to go to the building department to get? Yes. Yes. Permit? So you should okay, you so. should reach out to Jennifer Mullins tomorrow and just tell her you got approval yeah. and then just okay. do whatever steps are required next after that. For the permit. Okay. Super. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. No problem. Take care. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Bye. Okay, and our next um, proposal application is number 19, the town of Amherst, and this is to design or to install, sorry, a prefabricated public toilet at Kendrick Park. I don't know if you had a chance to see the drawings in the package. Um, I, they usually like to do the screen sharing, so that'll be a little easier. So I'll uh, introduce the individual who I just promoted. So this is Bob Parent. He is our... Bob, forgive me if I get your title wrong. He's our special projects, capital projects manager, but also a professional engineer. Did I get that correct, Bob? Uh, relatively okay. close. I think it was special capital projects coordinator was the position okay, there you that go. was created last July. Um, so yes, thanks, Rob. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here, Bob. Thank you. So if you'd like, I can talk a little bit about the project and maybe perfect. just a little bit of my background. As, as Rob indicated, I'm a professional engineer. I've been working in the business for about 40 years, spent 30 years in the consulting engineering field, um, and then spent most of the last 10 years as a municipal employee, public works director in East Longmeadow for half that time, 
and then city engineer in Holyoke. So I've kind of worked on both sides of the public spectrum and decided I didn't want to retire. So I'm I'm helping the town move some projects forward. Um, and this is one of those projects. Uh, my understanding, and I, I went back and I read the site plan approval for the Kendrick Park project, I think that was approved back in 2020. Um, there was a desire at that point to have a restroom facility at the park. I think it was is talked about during public comment. Um, and um, what we're hoping to do is to try to move that that goal forward at this point. Um, using now I I'm looking at okay I can screen share or you could screen share or what's the best way to do that? Um, you know I think it'd be great if you can because then okay. you can drive us around. Sure. Okay, let me make certain I can share the right screen. So you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, uh, we can. I'll have to zoom in a little bit as I go through things, but the the goal maybe to get you oriented first, and I apologize for this kind of ugly looking plan because there's a bunch of notations that I think AutoCAD uh, placed uh in that if you see the little yellow sticky notes i don't know yeah. if it shows up that way um when i did this at the office i'm at home now and did it at the office i didn't see those but unfortunately when i do it at home i see that um what you see in front of you is a plan for a uh roadway reconstruction project that the dpw has designed internally and they have put out to bid and actually awarded to warner brothers um, and Warner Brothers is scheduled to begin construction. This is just one little piece of the project, but uh, scheduled to begin construction of this project sometime after college graduation gets out at the earliest of this year. Uh, so the roadway improvements that you see here are improvements that uh, that the DPW has planned and, as I said, has is is getting ready to start the execution of. Uh, you can see the angled parking. You can see the other improvements relative to the roadway. They were planning to make sidewalk improvements as part of that roadway project. And if you look at the bottom of the screen where my cursor is, this is the sidewalk that they're planning to construct, an expanded sidewalk connecting to the existing pathway that goes up to the park area. Um, and what we're proposing to do is to come in alongside uh, their roadway project, and I apologize if you're seeing what just popped up on my screen. I'll get this crazy. No, we, we, we don't see your pop-up. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you don't. No, nothing bad, but it was just a, some sort of advertising thing that popped up. Um, what we're proposing to do is alongside the sidewalk that they're constructing as part of this project, to um, install, as you indicated, a, a pre-manufactured, pre-fabricated uh, restroom facility that right now we have shown to be directly adjacent to the sidewalk. Um, and I'll show you some, some photographs and layouts of that restroom facility in a moment. But one of the items that we had flagged in our DRB application is that we expect to seek a waiver of the 15-foot setback for structures from the roadway right-of-way. The right-of-way here is a little bit less than 60 feet, but it's effectively the backside of the sidewalk. So in order for us to meet the 15-foot setback from that, we would actually have to take this facility and move it further into the park and basically sort of create a perpendicular, you know, sidewalk walkway to the restroom as opposed to aligning it um, and, and paralleling it with the proposed sidewalk. So it's our, certainly our desire to, to locate it the way we have shown, but we do know, know that we need to get a waiver from the planning board in order to do that. Um, so what is this facility? It's something, if you Google something called the Portland Lou. The Portland Lou, the reason it's called the Portland Lou is they were originally constructed to serve the city of Portland, Oregon. And the city actually, I believe, has a patent on the design and had, has licensed that to a fabricator uh, who can then fabricate, manufacture, and ship these units anywhere in the country. There's about 300 of them in place, as I understand right now. Um, 
locally town of greenfield uh just put one in last fall i haven't been up there since the day it was it was uh brought onto site but it's between if you're familiar with where the wilson's department store used to be there's a large parking lot behind that building it's chapman and davis street it's located on the edge of the parking lot behind uh chapman and davis uh, that's the closest installation there are several in Cambridge. There are a few in Somerville. There's a couple more being proposed in Lowell, Massachusetts, as I understand from the the, the supplier. Uh, but effectively, it's it's a single unit, single occupancy restroom facility. Um, it's it's effectively a no frills facility. It's it's um, you know has all the essential components within the interior of the building. It has a changing uh, table inside of the structure. It has a hand washing station on the outside of the structure. Um, it has louvers at the bottom and the top of the structure. It has a, a skylight at the top of the structure. Um, when I got involved and we were starting to take a look at options, I sat down with the town manager, building commissioner, Rob Moore, public safety departments, police and fire. And one of the concerns regarding putting a restroom facility at this location, particularly one that might be open to the public after the normal playground hours, you know, most of, you know, the restrooms at, at most parks in town have time blocks on them and they time out, they lock when, when the, 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 the park closes for the daytime. The intent on this one would be to have time, time blocks on it, but to have them um, open into the evening. Uh, which raised a concern from a public safety standpoint of being able to um, sort of better manage the activity related to the restroom. And one of the advantages of this facility, if you can see the louvers, is basically you can see from the outside of the facility um, you know, how many occupants there might be on the interior of the facility. So it's it's screened, it's, you know, it's private, but on the other hand, you can see the bottom of the facility, you can see the very top of the facility, um, it has some other provisions that that are have been tested over the years in Portland and elsewhere, for instance, in terms of interior lighting. The interior lighting is blue lighting. And the reason for that is to discourage some of the activities that could go on um, on the interior of the um, of the restroom facilities and do, unfortunately, in public restroom facilities fairly often. So they're they're found that the blue lighting makes it less favorable and conducive to some of the illicit activities that might happen. Um, so let me, you know, this is is the manufacturer's uh, uh, brochure. If you want to see what some of these facilities look like, uh, this top facility is actually at a park in California uh, that was installed by Portland Lou. The lower one is in Cambridge, Mass, um, in that streetscape area. Uh, the one at the very top of here is the, is the unit in Greenfield as it was being installed last fall. Um, basically comes, you know, pre-manufactured. The only thing that the owner does is they basically uh, put the support structure, the, the foundation in place and the slab in place with all the necessary piping and piping connections in place for the unit um, and then whatever type of exterior type of improvements or enhancements they might want to put in place. Um, there are a layout of the restroom. You can see this. Um, it's one end of the restroom is a mechanical or one end of the structure is a mechanical room effectively. And the other end is the curved end is where the where the entryway is into the restroom. Um, everything is ADA compatible, as I indicated. There's a changing table and all the other necessary facilities inside. Um, as I mentioned, the skylight. You can get these units with solar panels on the roof. This particular location, I'm a bit concerned that we probably don't have enough solar exposure to be able to rely reliably rely on um, solar panels alone as a power source. Um, because there are a number of trees uh, in relatively close proximity to this location. And um, in order to keep this facility functioning in the wintertime, the piping on the interior of the building and the hand washing station outside is heat traced. 
to prevent it from freezing. So if we had an issue where we we couldn't reliably provide power throughout the winter time, we might risk freezing pipes. So I, right now, I think we're leaning towards providing a dedicated electrical connection to this location to make certain that we have reliable power. Um, I know there'll be a question regarding lighting. The lighting to this facility is effectively an LED rope type lighting system that is located on both sides of the structure. Relatively, you know, it, it's enough to light the face of the structure. Um, so you can see it and actually changes it changes intensity depending on whether or not the restroom is occupied or not occupied. Um, site lighting, if I flip back up to the, let's see. If I look at this carefully, there is a, I'm not seeing it on the plan right now, but there is decorative lighting that's being installed as part of the sidewalk and streetscape project. We're not at the moment proposing to do any additional lighting uh, beyond what is proposed to be done as part of the DPW's project there. Um, Bob, is it possible to zoom in on the the Lou location? Because I see certainly uh, as I look on my own screen, there's a an LP right on the concrete pad light pole. There is a utility pole. Let me see. Oops. Yeah, that will be, that I believe is an, well, no, actually, I guess it is a proposed uh, light pole because there's an existing one you can see over to the right on the on the path. So, you know, we would benefit from some lighting that's proposed as part of that project. But again, we're not proposing any large scale floodlights or anything like that um, as part of this this project. So the everything you see on this plan, again, other than this rectangle, and the Portland Lou footprint is something that's part of the the upcoming DPW streetscape project. Great. Do you have anything of... more to add in your in your um, introduction to this? You know, we did look at options early on. We looked at you know effectively something like this, or there are some precast concrete alternatives that might be out there that are probably a better fit for like campgrounds and park grounds and things like that. You may have seen some of those around. Uh, we did take a look at a, you know, completely custom built in place restroom facility. And the real concern again, came back to public safety. And, you know, the, the police and fire department really wanted something that was simple, that could be easily monitored um, and, and controlled such that there were a minimum number of problems, and if there was a problem, they would be able to readily respond to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, if I may ask a question, and then, then I wish that I'll turn it over to other members of the board. Um, I'm curious about, I was curious about the lighting, so thank you for anticipating that. I'm curious about, um, whether we could use solar if we adjusted the location and whether anybody has studied that. I know this is not gonna have a huge electrical draw, but I'm also mindful that we have sustainability in mind. And if it's a possibility yeah. that we should probably go for it. Um, and then I'm also just wanna put in a word for um, and being mindful of the transition from the sidewalk to the concrete lab uh, for accessibility purposes and making sure that that transition is level. Certainly on the solar topic, and I unfortunately, Rob, can you access the photograph that I sent out of the site? Um, I can, if not, I'll jump off and I can, I can find it in a moment. I, I didn't put it as part of the original submission, so it's not in this packet um uh let me see i'm trying to look through what i have okay let me oh. bear with me and... a, a, a photograph uh looking at the site um so you can see and it's a little tricky to see because you're seeing autocad symbols here but you know there's one existing tree over here to the i guess the south side of of the restroom facility there's another <laughs> one here over to the north side um 
I, I'm not going to say that there's no solar exposure there, but it's somewhat limited. And I, we certainly could look at that feature, but have the the um, utility connection as a fallback if necessary. I just don't want to be in a situation where we mm -hmm. install this and find out our batteries die in January and we get a freeze and we're we're breaking pipes at that point. Right. Um, so I prefer to, particularly since we also don't want to dig up the sidewalk after the fact, we want to put everything in there that we need now um, and have that ready. Um, that sounds like a reasonable compromise. If you could just, you know, if it's a matter of moving it five feet to the left so that you get sure. more consistent exposure when the leaves are on the trees. So Bob, you did submit a picture of I guess the proposed location of where it's going to go. Right. Um, it's just a photograph. I mean, the DRB members have that in their packet. Um, I don't know if you wanted one of us to screen share it so we could show it to everybody, but is that what you want us to do? Do you yeah, want us to show you, the photograph? Okay. If you could, I think that uh, presents the picture literally of, of okay. the location, which is. Yeah, let me just, uh, I'll do that real quick. Just give me one second. Okay. Can everybody see this? No, oh, says my. There we go. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that took a while. That was weird. It said my screen share is loading. All right, now you can see the screen. So can you, you see know, the like, screen or no? Yeah, yes, we, we can. can. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Good. We do. Let me move my. Where I have everybody. The utility pole that you see in the left hand side of this photograph is the effectively the north end of the restroom facility where the the doorway would would swing to yeah. the north um you know we do have you know what we're not directly under a tree but you know we do have some pretty you know significantly tree covers to the north and south of the, of this site so i i just don't have a good feel will we have enough hours during the daytime to be able to get direct solar um, coverage to the panels on the roof to reliably make it through the winter time. I, I but you know, we certainly can if we can do the alt, you know, do both, then that will help to ensure that we don't have the problem that I'm, I'm concerned about, particularly in the winter time. That's something. I think Pat's hand is up. Pat, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I, Erica, I, I had the same concerns that you had in terms of accessibility, public safety and um, whether or not there could be some um, energy efficiency. And, and so, you know, we're all familiar with the term hybrid because we have many vehicles that are hybrid. And so I'm wondering, it, and I, I don't know how this affects the cost of, of this facility, but I'm wondering if it could be hybrid. So there could be solar to capture what, what's possible and position to do that. And at the same time, have it hooked up to a, a dedicated electric unit. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to make the most sense to me to optimize the, the um, green aspect of it. But at the same time, you know, I, I travel extensively and there are variations of this type of facility in many cities in Europe. And I think that they're well used, they're well maintained, and they're welcome. And so if if the public safety personnel in Amherst and DPW and whoever else weighs in on it feels that they can manage its presence, I think it's probably a very good addition to Kendrick Park. Thanks, Pat. So I think, yeah, certainly the hybrid option to the extent that we can, we will. Um, and just thinking out loud, the good thing is when my biggest concern is the winter, there, there's very little electrical loads in this facility. You know, it's it, so it doesn't require a lot of capability. The biggest load is really the heat tracing in the wintertime, mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the thermal load associated with that. And the nice thing is there's no leaves on the tree in the wintertime. So perhaps we can benefit from that increased solar exposure in the wintertime and my as an engineer i like to plan for what could go wrong 
and my concern is, you know, we could find out that we draw the batteries down if we get cloudy, snowy days, long duration in the wintertime, and, and now have a problem where things freeze up and it's a much bigger problem. But if we can find out a way to, to do both, why not? It would make sense. Yeah. To, to make it a hybrid yeah. um, situation and, and uh, you know, en engineering wise, that we know that's quite possible. Right. I agree. Karen or Lindsay or Karen. Um, Karen, go ahead. The the location was was chosen to have it be close to. Why was this particular location chosen right next to the road like that? When you come in, um, accessibility and visibility. Um, you, you generally don't want to put a restroom somewhere where it can't be seen, where public safety officials can drive drive by it and readily see um you know see the activity so it and the desire to minimize uh the intrusion into the park area you know so it is as opposed to pushing it in 10 or 20 or 30 feet um where we're you know taking away more park space we're putting it right adjacent to where there's the existing hardscape already uh, it was really what drove that that uh desire Karen, did you raise the question because you have some concerns about the location or you, was it a curiosity? No, I, I just, um, I mean, I don't think it's beautiful. <laughs> and uh, you come, uh, That's this is the approach that I always take to the park. And so it's, yeah, I, I, I understand that and um, I respect that, but you know, and, and safety, all those things, that does bring in it but <laughs> in my perfect world it would be tucked into a nice landscaped area and wouldn't be visible because aesthetics are important no i think that that's an important point and one of the things that we can think about is that the entrance like the cars now are moving um one way on the street and so we'll be seeing it from the back and if the majority of people are walking to it from town that they're seeing it from the back i don't know if it's possible to rotate it 180 degrees if i'm reading this correctly yeah, it certainly could be rotated i think the thought right now was to have the entrance face the park uh to be more um conducive to 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 use okay. by folks that might be coming from the park area but you know, if there's a desire to rotate it around 180 degrees, um, it's, you know, that's definitely very doable. It's it's always a trade-off. Um, mm -hmm. You know, anytime you do plantings, anytime you do screening, having spent a number of years in Holyoke, we would do great things at Parkland and the police department would ask us to cut them all down because they wanted to maintain visibility. Um, so it, it's... Huh. Karen, please. Yeah, um, I was just curious. You had mentioned that at some point you would lock it down for the day or the evening. I was just curious how you were thinking about that. Um, it is on the edge of the university. So sure. uh, just wondering. Yeah, the, there's been internal discussions. It, it'll be somewhat of a policy decision to me be made, I, I think probably ultimately, you know, through the town administration of what hours to leave the restroom facility open to, you know, certainly during the daytime, it would be there to serve the park, but it, into the evening, um, you know, certainly it would be beneficial to serve, you know, the folks that are coming through that area later at night. Um, the discussions we had with public safety seem to indicate there'd be a desire not to leave it open 24 7 have some period of time in the late evening that it would stay open to and then have the automatic timed locks lock things down it and again i'm not i'm not going to suggest midnight one o'clock two o'clock but at some point where a decision is made you know that the the town no longer desires to provide access to people um and will shut things down and and 
you know, reopen it automatically, you know, the next morning. Um, but it wasn't to leave it on, you know, on or leave it fully accessible 24 seven. There is a desire to lock things down at some point. And I believe, as I understand it, that the DPW does that at uh, some of the park facilities, but those are typically shut down, you know, based on the park use hours, not they don't they aren't encouraging people to use the parks into the evening, whereas we know that that individuals do you know walk through these areas um, into the late evening. Thank you. May I do a quick screen share? I'm looking at the materials that you provided, their their brochure, if you will, and the one image that's provided of the backside hmm. is rather the advertising branded. is <laughs> yeah. that something that we have to live with i don't think so no i think certainly we can do something better than that or nothing at all mm -hmm. yeah that seems important um it's it's, it's very eye-catching if you will and i think mm. very complementary to our our beautiful park Lindsay, I know you haven't had a comment yet. I see um, Karin's hand, but I want to give you a minute to think and jump in. Um, Karin and then Lindsay. I just have a quick question, which is, do these come in colors like red or something that would make it like a statement, an architectural statement rather than such a utilitarian uh, Portland U blue? My understanding is that they don't, um, and I believe it's a, a finish that is very vandalism resistant, very able to be cleaned, maintained, things like that. Um, and I try to stay away from any sort of field painting of anything because the longevity of any type of, you know, coating that's not a manufactured applied coating typically is is nowhere nearly as as good as what is is furnished with the unit but yeah it, it, i can ask that question but as far as i know at this point it's this is the standard finish and color that it's provided in thank you go ahead Lindsay. um okay so i'm excited about the idea of having a public restroom in this location um a little hard to tell exactly how it fits on the site with just the one image provided um, and how it works with the circulation exactly. Um, I appreciate the documents you provided. It just, it's just a little hard to really gauge the, the way it will appear um, with respect to the existing conditions. Um, so I feel like some of the questions that have already been raised around the graphic, the Portland Lou graphic, which appears on every Welcome. photo. Welcome. Hope you got mail. Sorry about that. Um, Goodbye. As well as the color, uh, which was another question. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I personally think I'd, I'd like to see it in some kind of rendering. Um, just to get a better sense of how this really fits into the landscape and um, before making any final decisions um, and to get final word on whether or not that graphic is a necessity or if we can avoid that because I think that makes a pretty big difference. Um, so am I understanding correctly that the sound will travel outside of this? based on the way that it's open at the top and bottom? Yes, it it it's not a soundproof enclosure. So yes, any, yes. Yeah. Cause that as, you know, somebody who does, it, given that it is, I, I appreciate that it's close to the walkways, but I don't know, that could be a little bit problematic as well if you're approaching the park and um, whatever's happening inside might not be something you wanna hear. Um, so, yeah, I have some concerns, but I do like the idea. And I think in certain contexts, it actually doesn't look bad. And like some of the more urban contexts, it looks fine with hardscape, but this isn't really that. So it's, 
it's just um I'm not confident that it will that will read as you know as well. Karen. Yeah, I know we've talked about that graphic, the white and blue one. I was wondering if it's possible to create a different graphic that could be added or adhered to the site. I'm just wondering, how do people know? How is it identified as a loo? Mm. Let me find the right document again, and I will quickly. So I see the okay. traditional right. indicator of um, by the door of restroom facilities, multi-gender and accessible. I don't see, like this one's branded on the front as well, but it also says public restroom up at the top. So we could add this to our our list of questions about the ways that it'll be signed. We avoid the blue and white on the back, but can we, again, the branding on the front. This is the one that's going in Greenfield. They have a different blue sign. It appears that the text is on the top and I don't, I can't tell what's on the door. Cambridge Mass, and then that other park, so. Right, and is it necessary to identify it as a Portland Loo? Yeah. I'll definitely get that, that question answered. I suspect it isn't, but I want to make certain I give you a definitive answer. Thank you. Um, Karen. Um, Something Lindsay said uh, gave me an idea, and I agree. I think that in certain urban settings, it actually would work really well and not be such a jarring, you know, this we're trying to create this beautiful playground, uh, uh, and the aesthetics are wood and flowers and, and children playing. I wonder if one could look at the other side that's closer to the buildings uh, on the sidewalk. I also realize, yes, you have to have the police go by, it has to be accessible, but is that something that you considered at all to just put, I mean, you know, if you're uh, somebody with a child that has to go to the loop, it's not that much further to walk to, uh, to the street over there on East Pleasant. I'd love to sort of go around the park and see where would this, it's gonna be functional, it's gonna be a great addition. I applaud that you found this, I like all the positives, but could we find a setting where it would be less jarring? That's what I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. I do think it's important to note that it, it needs to be on an accessible route. And so that that's something that might limit its potential locations. And I'm I'm guessing that on this side, they're taking advantage of the road and infrastructure work that's happening and kind of rolling this in. Um, forgive me, Bob, if I misspoke there, but it's, there's probably a component of it that has to do with the convenience of this particular project being underway. I um, think that's definitely correct. I can't at the moment, rule out the other side. It may, it may be possible. I need to look okay. closer at that. Great. So I'm going to take a minute to to sum up some concerns, and then we can close out the conversation because it sounds like we're not going to approve this this evening and ask uh, the town to come back. So we ask that you look at other potential locations where it might this is such a loose term, but fit in um, a little bit more fluidly. Um, and in so doing, you might also look for better solar exposure. Um, we're interested in avoiding the branded graphics and would like to know 
how the town of Amherst will include a, a signage to indicate that it is a public restroom. Um, there was a question about other colors. None of the other pictures have other colors, so I'm guessing that's a no, but we can ask the question. Um, so those are those, did I sum up our, our lines of inquiry? And then, and then I kind of expand on that with the question of once placed, um, will it, will there be any landscaping or, um, other features? So you, one thing you left out was the, I don't know if you mentioned this, but possible hybrid option for the solar. Well, it so sounds like, like Bob already said that that's possible. So it's like okay, there would yeah. be solar, but then the, the electrical would be there as a, just yeah. in case, yeah. And then Lindsay had asked for a possible rendering to see uh, where it could fit on site. Mm -hmm. um, and then the signage, as you mentioned, the branding as the Portland Lou. I mean, if it's possible that we can get away from that and then uh, rebrand it differently or maybe propose signage that could be different um, or just explore other ideas. That's that's a sense of what was discussed um, from what I've heard. I mean, Lindsay has her hand raised. I don't know if she wants to add something. You I just was, yeah, I just, I guess it's maybe not the most critical point right now because we're not approving this, but in terms mm -hmm. of the slab being accessible, that was something oh, yeah. that was noted. And as a final comment, I just, I guess I'd be curious if, yeah, what other, what other types of facilities there are to consider if this is it's, if this is the only one that you know exists or if there's you know a family of similar structures or or you know um, public restrooms of this nature that we could consider. Um, I just I'm not sure what the background is on why this one in particular, but that might help us consider um, you know something that that potentially does fit in this context better. Okay. So Bob, you have a, sure. a short list of um, important questions from us. And I don't know if you could um, come back next month and we could approve it. But I, I do think that sure. um, um, a composite a rendering um, collage, call it what you will, to show this on site in the proposed location it would be helpful. Hey okay. Bob, do you have um do you have a tight timeline for, for this project or is it uh, something that could take a little bit to yeah. uh, process before it starts? Another month wouldn't be a deal breaker. I have okay. to get the planning board process started as well. So mm. you know that will overlap with this process process obviously. Um we do, this is anticipated to be ARPA funded. So mm -hmm. we do have a timeline relative to that. And the um, our ARPA coordinator is trying to, we, we have a complete drop dead that the funds have to be committed by the end of this calendar year. We basically have to have that money, not necessarily spent, but in a firm contractual relationship, or we risk losing the federal funds. Um, she is trying to get us not not have everybody go to December 31st of this year and and, and take that risk. So uh, she's trying to get us um, committed sometime around the July time frame at this point. So I, yeah, it's not there's a schedule, but not um, nothing that uh, another couple of weeks would make a, a huge difference on. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks okay. for your time. Thank you. Um, just for my information, is there, I've taken notes, so I think I have everything uh, written down that, that I need to address. Is there, is that the format that comments come back to me at this point, or is there something that Rob puts together, or, or is it strictly based upon, not that you have to, Rob, I don't, you need to, don't need to, I don't need to create any work for you. Um, I just was wondering if I should expect something or just go forward with what I've, I've taken for notes myself. Uh, I mean, it's up to you. If you feel like a reminder email would be helpful. Um, usually I only make a document of the official recommendations okay. once the board votes to approve. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you took good notes, Bob, you can rely right. on your own notes if you need to. Right. And you and, and also, I don't we should far apart so we can, yeah. we can compare notes as well. We should also discuss the next date for the DRB meeting. Um, 
May 27th is a holiday. So the next meeting would potentially be May 20th. Okay. So that's when this meeting would take place again. Um, does that work for the other members of the board, May 20th, as our next meeting dates? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, Bob, May 20th is, is the continued date for this uh, petition. And I'm just double checking. Yep, that works perfectly fine with me. So, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you. Less than a month. Okay. Take care. Thanks, Bob. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you all for your comments there. Um, the next item on the agenda is approval of meeting minutes from our last meeting. And curiously, um, three of us here were present at the meeting. So let me get to those on my screen. So many tabs. There it is. So this was a busy meeting. So um, it kind of goes outside the normal two page range to four pages. So I noticed. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of information that was being discussed. It was hard to capture it all yeah. briefly. So my apologies. You did a great job. You're Thank you. Brilliant. Um, so Lindsay was here and Karen Winter was here. Um, and so if I don't know if perhaps Lindsay and Karen have already reviewed these and I don't need to do the slow scroll, but. <laughs> I am scrolling as well, actually. I'm okay. Them, but yeah. Karen, do you, is this helpful to you or should I let you read it on your own screen or what have you want to do? This? No, it's, it's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But you don't have to go that slowly because, yeah. I, I think the biggest discussion we had from that meeting was about the Northtown Common. That was the project that took the most time because the design review discussion was only like, like fifteen minutes or so. Um. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll get to our recommendations. Yeah. Um, Lauren, I think you recommended some alternative to the crush stone for the common. Yeah, I actually, and I've been talking to Nate about that because I feel so strongly that asphalt is just going to, I don't know if we can avoid that. So the mm -hmm. oil and stone, which I have a driveway um, and it was not more expensive at the time than uh, getting it paved, which I never would have done. We don't we don't plow it, but it can be snow blown, and walkways are snow blown. So uh, there's no, not going to be a plow. I don't think it's going to mm -hmm. go, or or at least it's possible to snow plow them. So yes, I think here it is. So interested if in possible. Consider using oil and stone. Yeah. Oil. Yeah, uh, that's something that I'd really, really like to have examined uh, if that is a yeah. possible alternative. I mean, strongly, it's, it's, it's here is the recommendation, so I will yeah. hope that they are actually. But I um I word it in a way where it wasn't like a requirement, but it was more like if you if this is possible, right? If this is feasible, could you consider it? And mm -hmm. I think Nate made it sound like that the maintenance cost might be too high for something like that. So I don't. That's for him to figure out, but that, that's the impression I got. Right, but I think he's revisiting it too. Okay, yeah. Well, I I I appreciate that you're talking with Nate about it, Karen. Karen, um, I guess when I first saw it, it was in the discussion point, and it was noted that it alternatives like cobblestone or other durable materials, um, and that's fine. I mean, I know that that was brought up. Um, and that the recommendation is accurately represented in terms of the material that that we discussed. Um, and maybe I'm I'm not sure if I'm speaking for the group, but I feel like we were we were definitely feeling 
strongly about it. Um, and I understand that it may not be possible. So I, I, I'm fine with the wording of if possible, but maybe instead of consider using that we strongly support using or something along those lines. And I would be curious to hear other people's thoughts on that. And funny thing, if we're changing this line that I would say in lieu of instead of over because over could imply a construction. <laughs> um, which right, like it's not a layer on top of. Yeah. Just yeah. taking notes of what you're saying. So thank you. Yeah. Right. No I, I, think, I think one of the concerns was the the maintenance maintenance of it. And they were told that this would be so much harder to maintain. Mm -hmm. But I think in fact it is something that should be it should really be examined because I think we all do feel and it would and I appreciate that, Lindsay. I think we should word it that we very strongly recommend that asphalt not be used if possible um and but that we can't make it a requirement because we realize that they have a budget that they have to stay in yeah that was that seemed like a big concern i think dpw pushed back against not using asphalt because of the maintenance costs and i think their maintenance costs are not as high as they would like them to be for for parks and walkways so i think that's kind of the tricky situation but i definitely could reword that in the minutes um, just so it reflects that. Thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Rob, if you maybe you could think about um, kind of reword the sentence while we finish our review, and then we can circle mm -hmm. back to the rewording. Sure. So the, the next section um, is uh, for item 17, the Amherst College signage. I, I was just trying to remember. So with that, the Amherst bookstore font, we we first were discussing the font style and then just said that if the style is their standard, then it should just be a smaller size. Is that what we arrived at? Yeah, it's the Amherst College, it's mm -hmm. Amherst College's font. It's their right. word mark and they mm -hmm. added bookstore. So then the proposal was like, don't reinvent the wheel for right. Okay. This business, yeah, but rebalance the the text, and in fact, it's installed now. And it they did reduce the the race the, the white text on the background quite a bit. We made a difference. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen it recently. It's actually looking pretty nice. They got their signage up. They got the elephant. Um, it actually came out pretty well. I don't know if you had the chance to walk by that part of town yet. Yeah, it looks nice. Okay, I'm fine with everything else. So let me, um, I did write a quick sentence, Erica, if you want me to read it about that uh, crush, sorry, the um, oil and stone line on page two. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sure, so basically I wrote it out as um, the DRB strongly encourages the use of oil and stone in lieu of asphalt for the walking paths. I guess that subtle change brings a different meaning in a way where that's a preferred option, um, but at the same time, you know, you're giving them the ability to to go with asphalt if funding only allows for that. Karen and Lindsay, does that sit well with you? It's your proposed change. Um, yeah, but you know, the the reason we mentioned oil and stone mm -hmm. rather than cobblestones or any of those other things is that we thought that that was maybe going to be from the the cost. Uh, a possibility, a perhaps a possibility, but I guess maybe we want to, or I think we all felt strongly that we really disliked the idea of the paths being asphalt. They look okay when they're new, but in terms mm -hmm. of upkeep, they look horrible when they get old. That's what we yeah. have in front of our house, you know. I don't know. That's maybe not what we should do because we're concentrating on the minutes, but. Yeah, we can't read. We can't we read. Can't read it. We just yeah. have to correct yeah. the minutes so, to reflect so our intention. So. Yeah. Okay, so I I like the 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 way you did it, Rob. 
Okay. Okay. Um, the last portion of the meeting was a discussion about the design review criteria. So again, this is not our opportunity to have the conversation about like tonight's conversation about the design review criteria. This does this reflect the points that we made right at the last meeting. I think that looks good. Yep. Okay. All right, then. So um, may I have, please, a proposal to approve the minutes as with with changes. I move to approve the minutes with changes. Second. Um, a second. Okay. Those of us who are voting. I need to abstain because I was not there. Karen, Karen, <laughs> you, can, you, you can. <laughs> so to, Pat and um, Karen Blum abstained. Mm -hmm. The rest approved. Thanks, everybody. Um, those are long minutes. They aren't usually so expansive, but this there were some good deep discussions. Okay, um, moving on. A question for the group, and that is, have you had the opportunity to read the document that Rob provided with the uh, continued continued work on proposed language to the standards? I do apologize for getting that so last minute. I've had a busy week last week and was able to do them today, but if the group feels that you need more time to review it and then we can discuss at the next meeting, that's that's acceptable as well. It's up to you. I'm going to propose that just because I know yeah. that Karen Blum is new to the group and hasn't yeah, had so much of the background, and I want to make sure mm -hmm. that um, we can fully engage her in this in this conversation. So I thought I'd put the question out. I mean, if everybody's mm -hmm. read and feels that they're prepared for tonight, let's dive in. But if you'd like to pause this until next month, that we can probably. I I would like to pause it until next month. Thank you. Right, because Pat, you were away as well. That's true. Yes. Okay. I would appreciate that. Okay. And also, I do want to note that um, the document itself has the language of what's already there, and then anything new is in red. So if it has a line through it, that means you know we took it out. Red means it's new. So just keep that in mind when you're reviewing it, so you know. I guess what the changes are. And of course, please provide any comments that are helpful or necessary. I mean, totally open to to incorporating that. Mm -hmm. So our, our goal here is to streamline and update mm -hmm. the current list of nine DRB design review standards. Is it nine? Is it 170? I don't remember. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so do, doing that with uh, mm -hmm. in mind with both um, uh, consolidating um, where those places where the language often feels redundant, but then also uh, acknowledging that we have some complex projects in our in our downtown. So um, if we could all do that as homework, and then next week we'll or next month when we come back together on May 20th, we'll be prepared for this conversation. That would be fantastic. Okay, great. And Elliot will be up to speed. Oh. <laughs> She's taking notes. She's paying attention. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay, well then, um, is that the last item on the agenda? I believe so. Other minutes, uh, are there items we, we discussed already the, the uh, change of the date? May 20th. May 20th. Yep. Because May 27th is a holiday, at least Memorial Day. Um, so we can't do it that day. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, you already introduced Karen. Um, can't think of anything else. Okay. Fantastic. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Have a lovely evening. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye.